The reality is everybody has a responsibility here to get the House back up and running so that we can focus on the work of the American people, starting with additional aid to Israel, uh, to support them in this uh, terrible time of need. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Democrats need to look in the mirror here. Uh, they helped create this mess. So that's Congressman Mike Lawler from New York talking about the House Speaker stalemate. A third vote coming up today after Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan failing once again to come up with enough uh, support to secure the gavel. There are the numbers there actually losing in the second uh, Republican there, losing in the second round. Joining us now ahead of the vote, Texas Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. Uh, Congresswoman, welcome back to National Report. Vote number three is happening this afternoon. Will we have a speaker by the end of today? You know, your guess is as good as mine, but it's my hope that we will, because there's just way too much on our plates right now to not have a, a, a speaker in that office. You know, what we're facing at our border, what we're facing with spending and, and having in the middle of a, a continuing 45-day 45 uh, 45 day continuing resolution, we got until November 17th to figure out a solution before our uh, funding runs out for the government, not to mention, as you had said earlier, what's happening in Israel. We need strong leadership in Quite honestly, we needed it several weeks ago. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up with you, Congressman, if I, Congresswoman, if I can. November 17th is what you have staring at you, which you mentioned and you're well aware of. But also this wartime funding that the president will ask for tonight in his primetime address from the Oval Office, a request from Congress for $100 billion, not just for Israel and their war against Hamas, but Ukraine and their war against Russia. Uh, you know as well as any, to get this done, you're going to need leadership in the House. One, do you support what the president will potentially ask for, that $100 billion in aid for both Israel and Ukraine? Um, and then number two, does that play into votes today? I think it's a mistake to ask for those as part of a package. I think they're two separate, um, two separate countries, two separate wars, uh, and two separate um, instances. I think right now what we're seeing in Israel is, 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 is horrendous. We've sent aid to Ukraine, several tens of billions of dollars of aid that we've sent to Ukraine. We've asked for an accounting of that. I think for him to mix the two is a mistake. Um, yes, and you're absolutely right. We need to have a speaker in that seat to be able to move forward with legislation on the floor. Currently, the speaker pro tem's limit is to get us a new speaker, and he's able to, to run conferences and such, but he's not able to actually bring legislation onto the floor. So before we can have those conversations, we've got to get a speaker in place. I'm supporting Jim Jordan at this point, but I do wish it was the Jim Jordan that shows the same veracity that he's got in Judiciary Committee. I'm concerned about our spending. I don't want to see a clean CR that comes forward that continues Nancy Pelosi levels of spending. I'm also a Texas representative, and my focus is on what's happening at the border. The fact that we've got 8 million people who have illegally entered our country in the last two and a half years since Biden took over is concerning to me. The fact that we've had over 100,000 deaths because of fentanyl of, that's entering from our southern border is concerning to me. The trafficking, the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, we have got to prioritize our borders at the same time as looking to make sure that we are supplying Israel with the help that it needs as it is facing one of the worst travesties on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Uh, speaking of Israel, Congresswoman, you know, we've heard from the president, the DOD and other national security intel uh, that it was not Israeli forces which fired that airstrike, which ultimately yeah. hit near the hospital. And yet we continue to hear from a Democratic sitting member of Congress, uh, the fact from Rashida Tlaib that she's refusing to apologize for blaming Israel for that hospital blast in Gaza. Did you have a comment on that? Uh, do you believe Rashida Tlaib should yeah, be censured I, I, I for her remarks? I think that Congresswoman needs to be censured. Mm -hmm. I think she needs to be censured without a doubt. We are looking at complete dis, you know, misinformation that she is spreading. It's leading to deaths. It's leading to hatred. It's leading to other countries now taking a position against Israel. And it also led, I would say, probably to some of the canceled uh, meetings that you saw with President Biden while he was over in Israel. We knew hours after it happened, and Israel, to its credit, wanted to make sure that it had proof before it made a statement. It has a number of different um, um, uh, uh, witnesses, a number of different facts, including a video that shows that this was a, a missile that was launched from Gaza that misfired and, and hit right outside that hospital. 
Um, you also have conversations going on with Palestinians about what happened and in, in, in with Hamas, about what happened with that missile. So there's no doubt that that was a plant, that it was a misfire, and they were trying to take advantage of that to try to say that it was Israel to do it. For her to say that is completely wrong. It is creating chaos against Israel, and it should not be allowed to stand. Not to mention, again, the hundreds that have stormed the Capitol were eventually arrested. They're all calling for a ceasefire, seemingly triggered by that type of messaging, specifically from the Congresswoman from Michigan. Exactly. Uh, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne joining us on that. Thank you. Thanks so much.